Joker, directed by Todd Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix as the title role of Batman's arch nemesis. This movie blew me away. I wasn't, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I can only be honest. I wasn't looking forward to this movie when it first was announced. Joker? Uh, origin story of, like, Batman's main villain? This guy had mystery and mystique. I didn't want you guys to ruin it. Because after I saw Suicide Squad, I mean, I wasn't sure what the hell Hollywood was going to do with this character. That was cartoonish trash. And this movie was a masterpiece. Between the cinematography, the score, Joaquin Phoenix performance. <laughs> the way his character evolved, that he started off the film as this really frail Arthur Fleck character who was unsure of himself. His walk was almost painful to watch. The way he talked, the way he was just taken advantage of. And he had this uh, medical condition where it just caused him to blurt out laughing to the point where it was even hurting him to laugh. It was unique to the character. I've never seen this type of transition from any of the other Joker, you know, portrayals in the past. So it was something unique I enjoyed. And his transformation to when he became the Joker, to this cocky, arrogant, you know, walked with a swag. It was, it was genius. The way he portrayed the Joker was genius. And Todd Phillips, the director, this is the same guy that gave us The Hangover, the comedy The Hangover? What? I'm excited for what the future has in store for Todd Phillips. This guy is a genius. Um, like I said, I love the movie through and through, but it's not going to be for everybody. This isn't an explosion, you know, typical comic book movie with, you know, villains and chase scenes and a lot of stuff like that. This is a character-driven drama, and I believe it's an important drama at that. This movie talks a lot about mental illness and how they're portrayed in society and how, at times, they're kind of forgotten about. And... There's a lot of talk and controversy about the fact that this film has, you know, violence and obscene violence more than we've ever seen before. Well, first of all, that's not true. And it's not even true in the sense of a comic book movie. Have you guys forgot about the Wolverine movie, Logan? I mean, I love that movie too, but there was a lot of violence in there. Have you guys forgot about Deadpool 1 and 2? There was obscene amounts of violence in that which I enjoy that movie too, those movies too. So it wasn't anything we haven't seen before, but I think the issue was the way it was being portrayed as realistic. You know, this is like a realistic movie. Like This could be a true origin story of how someone becomes the Joker. You know, this could possibly happen. That's, that's why I think there was controversy, but I think the important message of this film, ultimately, was the warning signs and, you know, the mentally unstable, the mentally handicapped, the way they're kind of overlooked. And a lot of these things kind of stem from one issue to the no another. You know, there was moments in this film where they were clearly talking about, you know, gun violence and how guns being in the wrong hands, such as, you know, the mentally ill, is possibly not a good idea. And there's... Spoiler alert, there's a scene in the film where a gun is given to Arthur Fleck's character, and even Arthur Fleck knows he shouldn't have a gun. <laughs> that's a big no-no, and uh, I think that's a big turning point of the entire film. So, yes, it's a very important movie to watch, and quite frankly, to be quite honest, and I watch a lot of movies, I watch a lot of TV shows, this was the best movie of 2019. If anyone should get an Oscar, now let's forget all the politics, let's forget about them. Who should really get an Oscar? Joaquin Phoenix. He gives you it all. I mean, beyond his immense dedication to his craft, I mean, he lost I don't know how many pounds to get into character. This guy was studying, like, laughing and different disorders. I mean, he truly immerses you in the character to the point where while watching it, you totally forget 
he's an actor. He sucks you right into the role. Now, as an actor myself, that's the type of acting that truly moves me. And, um, you know, you see a lot of movies where there's a lot of social pieces about what's going on in the world and stuff like that. And, like, you got these really emotional characters. And I really didn't see that from um, Arthur or the Joker. But, as their one character. But uh, his transition alone, the feel, the movement, he really embraces mental illness and uh, the feeling of it, the feeling of dread, the entire movie just... It deserves all the praise it could possibly get. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are going to compare the past Jokers together, especially the Dark Knight's Joker, Heath Ledger. I understand the attraction to do this, but these two Jokers were entirely different interpretations of the character. I mean, the Dark Knight's Joker, Heath Ledger, you had a character bent on watching the world burn. He had this anarchist type agenda and it was for his enjoyment. He wasn't crazy. You know, as much as the world thought he was, he was totally with it. Now, Arthur Fleck, Joaquin's portrayal of the Joker in the Joker movie, he's mentally unstable. He doesn't see things clearly and he believes what he's doing is right. Uh, he thinks that murdering these people is the right thing to do. You know, and both of them, they do have similarities. There is similarities about their agenda, how like, you know, we care about these type of people, like the rich and the powerful, but we don't care about the poor. And it's, you know, there is, you'll see a scene in the movie, a very pivotal scene in the Joker movie that you'll remind, it'll remind you of Heath Ledger's and everybody's losing their minds. You'll remember that. There is a, there is a scene like that, but it isn't stealing from one, of an, one another. They are very different. They are very unique on their own. And to me, they're both amazing. Um, like I said, Heath Ledger, he did have like 20 minutes of screen time probably through The Dark Knight. I don't know exactly the minute amount. But you got Joaquin Phoenix, he's running a two-hour movie. He's in every scene. He is the protagonist and the antagonist at the same time. So it's like you're rooting for him at times because you're watching. And that's, that's the scary part of this movie. And that's the controversy of this movie. We're rooting for a knowingly evil character. That's where a lot of the controversy is. You know, this guy is a mass murdering lunatic. But we see how this mass murdering lunatic is created. And sometimes our worst evils are created from society in general. And uh, it's an important film. Go see it, guys. Buy a ticket. Have a good time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know. What do you guys think about Joaquin Phoenix's performance? Do you think this beats out the film Master or Her or Gladiator or Walk the Line? Um, and how do you guys think Todd Phillips was doing on this directing?